Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I want to broach the topic of how much government spending is too much. So just for clarification, um, I come from a school of economic thought that is very critical of government spending. I believe that just because the government spends your money instead of you spending your money, it does not really create any growth in the economy. And as a matter of fact, it can actually have detrimental effects on the economy. But in this video, what I want to do is just show you some stats of countries with government spending and government spending levels and sort of illustrate how they have an effect on their measures of economic growth, which we use as commonly as GDP. And Now, in videos in the past, I've made at least a couple of videos on this. I've talked about how GDP is a very... Um, incomplete measure of what an economy is because it primarily measures just the consumption part of the economy, aka what we buy at the supermarket, but it does not measure the productive side of the economy, what it took through the manufacturing and the factories and the construction and the tools to develop um, to create those final goods. Unfortunately speaking, we just don't have the numbers for other countries to measure the, their economies, their productive side of the economies that way, which would be gross output. As a matter of fact, we do have gross output numbers for the U.S., and I have been astonished by how far back I could go to get those gross output numbers, but I cannot find those for other countries. If I ever do, I'll catalog them and take a look at, um, you know, I'll take a look at those numbers and see what I can, uh, what kind of insights I can grasp from it. But I think the best way right now that we have of all the available tools that we have to measure um, whether government spending is good for an economy or if, in my opinion, is too much of an economy, aka we have made it too, it's consuming too much of economic resources, is to take a look at a metric called the government spending to GDP ratio, okay? Now, obviously here, I've got the most infamous, you know, recent infamous version here of Greece's government spending to GDP. I mean, outside of what happened with the Venezuelan collapse in 2014. But, um, you know, we ought, if for a frame of reference, Greece's economy famously collapsed in about 2010 or so, and it went through a serious default, and uh, the Eurozone had to really bail it out. And, it, and Greece has been struggling until then. But I wanted you to take note of its government spending to GDP levels, that up until Greece started approaching its collapse, it was, at, it was well over 40% of GDP. So government spending comprised nearly half of the consumption part of the economy. And then with the onset of 2008 and the spectacular collapse, that spending ratio increased. Now, one of the things that I think that um, Keynesian school economists very much criticized about Greece's approach to containing its catastrophe, containing its economic crisis, and resolving that was that they, they tried to criticize Greece and say Greece was being was instigating austerity, okay? So when they say that they, these austerity measures were hurting Greece's growth, they were saying that Greece was cutting back on its government spending because, quite frankly, they were running record amounts of debt and were defaulting on their debts. They were running deficits. They did not raise taxes in, in to enough to offset those deficits and debt, and so that increased their debt to a point that it collapsed. And so therefore, they tried to cut its expenditures, but by cutting government spending, they were cutting necessary resource spending going out into the economy. But the, the chart here kind of uh, disproves that, because if you look at the ratio of government spending to GDP, it only increased. Now, what does this mean? Well, this probably means that that GDP was actually falling while government spending may have tried to be cut a little bit. I don't know exactly because I don't have Greece's government spending numbers right in front of me, but they didn't cut enough to offset what they lost in GDP. Instead, instead they were consuming more and more and more of the economy 
And it looks like the threshold for Greece's collapse was when, when it reached this 50% level. So it seemed to be that when government spending reaches about 50% of a nation's economy, a nation's economy, now this is, this is rough speak, this is a rule of thumb, this is not like absolute proof, then it, it tends to be that that economy is in serious jeopardy of default, especially at a time of economic collapse, okay? Now, the reason why I said that this is a rule of thumb and cannot be used as just the ultimate, the ultimate deciding metric is because, again, we're looking only at the consumption part of the economy. We are not looking at the productive side of the economy, and therefore, you know, measures can be different. The other thing is that not all government spending is created equal. Okay, in my opinion, and I think most economists, even Keynesian economists, will agree, government spending that is devoted to investment, such as infrastructure spending, yields more economic output, at least in the future, in future returns, than, say, government spending that is yield purely for consumption, such as welfare payments or social security payments, the retirement benefits but that invest in the productive structure of the economy, you know, I guess an argument could be education as well with a knowledge capital base, then that could theoretically grow the economy and cause more growth over time than just spending on pure consumption here. And the proof in the pudding for this is looking at GDP's real the, uh, Greece's real GDP growth, okay? So when we take a look at Greece's real GDP, notice that more or less they were sustainable in their real GDP. They kind of contracted here in 2004. So when we take a look at 2004 here, this shows why government spending to GDP was kind of going up a little bit. They seem to have recovered until the famous 08 collapse or the infamous 08 collapse. And that's when their government spending to GDP just, just escalated because their GDP numbers started spectacularly falling and plummeting. And look how it just continuously plummeted here. So despite the, despite the fact that uh, Keynesians like to criticize and say, well, Greece was undergoing austerity, in reality, Greece's government was spending more and more and more of the GDP components and it did not offset this spectacular collapse. And as a matter of fact, in my opinion, it made the collapse worse. It actually reduced GDP in the long run. So in my opinion, in the short run, government spending bills, and this is very practical because we're talking about stimulus bills today, especially massive stimulus bills in the U.S. that uh, the Democrat Party is trying to push through Congress, claiming it will grow the economy. In the short run, in the short run, government spending to uh, will increase GDP numbers, even real GDP numbers, as prices do not just automatically adjust right away. And again, you know, what they're boosting is the consumption side. They're not boosting the production side. And I'll argue that what they are actually doing is taking away from the production side to allocate to the consumption side, which then er erodes the economy, the true economy, the full base of the economy, both production and consumption over time. Because if you don't produce goods, then you have no goods to consume. You're just consuming capital, in, in other words, and eroding that productive base which is what creates the goods so that you have them available in the market to purchase and consume, which then when those goods become consumed, it results in mass shortages. And with those massive shortages, then you get the, the jump in price and it's actually revealed that the increase in government spending was taking away from the economy. It just doesn't look that way when we look at the GDP numbers because they're primarily devoted to consumption. So I'll argue that the high government spending was actually what made this crisis much worse than what it should have been. And what in reality should, should have happened is that Greece should have been cutting more government spending than what they, they tried to do here um, and, and probably definitely at least to levels uh, complementary to what they saw in the 1990s and 2000s, but if they really wanted to substantially recover and recover quicker, they would need to cut it well below these levels, okay? But let's say that Greece is the one-off situation. Let's say, okay, well, you know, you've got something with Greece, but, uh, you know, Greece is not the only country in the world. There's over 170 different countries in the world 
What about any others? All right, well, let's take a look at another European country. We're going to take a look at Spain. Now, for frame of reference here, Spain also went through a similar style collapse as Greece. Not as spectacular, but it did stagnate, and it stagnated for some time. And there was really some controversy over Spain's economy. Spain's economy, uh, you know, years ago, less than a decade ago, and, and it's, uh, you know, virtual, I would say, mini depression that it went through. It went through a years-long just stagnation in economic growth. So here we go again. So here it is in 2008, and then pretty much for five years, for five years, Spain's growth was either flat or negative. What was Spain's government spending to GDP? Well, when we look at it here, you know, we see that in the early 2000s, Spain's government spending to GDP was below 40%. Well, that was conducive with a rise in GDP. But with the collapse of 2008, with the collapse of 2008, look how much, look how much government spending decided to increase here as a component, as a percentage of GDP. Now, granted, a lot of this was probably due to a drop in GDP numbers due to the collapse of the 08 um, housing bubble, property bubble, and other asset bubbles that developed off of those investments. But what, what happened with Spain? Well, you know, if the Keynesians try to criticize and say, well, Spain's engage, was engaging in austerity measures, a.k.a. they were restricting government spending or controlling it, they weren't. They were consuming more and more of their uh, GDP component of the economy, and it failed to reignite their growth. Now, look at Spain's GDP, uh, government spending to GDP numbers. They're not as high as what Greece has got up to. And because of that, the stag the decline was less pronounced than Greece's numbers here. So it eroded their GDP numbers over time, but it, it did not completely decimate them. Although I would say that a five-year depression is pretty is pretty damaging to the economy because you have your population still growing here and this is not GDP per capita so in real living standards the people here in Spain definitely definitely suffered and it wasn't until G until government spending as a percentage of GDP declined so evidently evidently there were some cuts made to government spending here um, starting around 2014 2015 and probably complementary with a, a, fine, a finally a rebound in the economy that um, we, saw, we saw at least some sort of recovery, okay? So the recovery here was weaker than, than the upslope of what we saw in growth in GDP up until 2008. And why? Well, I would argue that's because your government spending to GDP levels did not go down to the levels that we saw in 2001 in 2008 here. So let's take a look at the percentage change over a year and just confirm this. Yep, so look here. So in the 2000s, you know, government spending, to, I mean, uh, real GDP growth year over year was, you know, about 3 to 4% mostly. You know, you had a couple years right after the dot-com bust that it kind of stagnated. And then you had a double-dip recession, okay, and then you had a rebound, you, but uh, the rebound wasn't wasn't quite as strong as what we in growth as what we saw earlier in the phase. You know, there was sort of a rebound here of four percent, but that was because of the drop in 2013, and then it sort of just stagnated from there. Okay, so again, that kind of reinforces the notion that there's a certain level that the that the economy can tolerate of government consumption of economic resources before the economy can't take anymore and it becomes much more susceptible at least to a collapse. It may be waiting for a trigger for another bubble to burst, but then when that bubble bur burst, it's all over and that economy is going to plunge into recession. Let's take a look at another weak economy in, in uh, the Eurozone and that's Italy, okay? So Italy follows a similar story to Spain, okay? Now, Italy's government spending to GDP is notoriously higher than Spain's. It actually looks eerily a lot like Greece's, but it did not spike like Greece's in uh, 2008. But it, they have high GDP, uh, government spending to GDP levels, nearly 50% in the 2000s. And then there's the 2008 collapse. And then finally, after the later portions of 2015, their government spending to GDP dropped a little bit, slightly below 50%. So let's see how their GDP, their real GDP, performed. Well, predictably, they grew. They grew during the 2000s, but they didn't grow at the, at the rates that Spain's did. So when we take a look at Spain's real GDP, 
Let's take a look at this for comparison here. Look how Spain's went through a stronger upslope here in the 2000s. You know, Spain, Spain over the course of 10 years increased by about 50% of GDP. But let's take a look at Greece's. Greece's did not go through that growth in that 10 years. Greece, on the other hand, didn't even grow by 20% of GDP during that time. Instead, it was a very, very sluggish growth that they went through. And I'll argue that's because of high government spending to GDP numbers. Then when the 2008 collapse happened, there's the spectacular crash. They sort of semi-recovered, and then there was just another collapse again in 2013. There's another recession, so they, they, bet they practically double-dipped. These high government spending to GDP levels prevented a real recovery until finally the economy started to grow again somewhat, and then it just started stagnating. And again, I would argue that's because these high government spending to GDP numbers were holding back the real growth of the economy there in Italy. It was actually eroding economic growth over time. Maybe in the short run it could cause a growth, but then over time it, the productive structure the production structure would erode. Now, I'm not really talking about um, the COVID pandemic situation right now and what's happened there because that's been an unusual act of God external event. I just want to go into what would happen during relatively normal times of the economy. Now, all of this seems to suggest that the threshold is at 50%. But like I said, that's a rule of thumb because I'm about to go over a country that seems to defy that norm, and that norm is France here. So looking at France's government spending to GDP, look how high it is. It is really, really high. It has been consistently above 50% of their GDP ever since for, for the data that I can really grasp. It's been that way pretty much since the late 80s, early 90s, okay? So in just looking at this, um, it, it should suggest if we looked at the other, at the last three countries, so when we looked at Greece, Spain, and Italy, it's like, wow, you know, France really should be like in perpetual decline. But when we take a look at France's real GDP numbers, we don't see that. We see instead real GDP growth. Now, granted, their real GDP growth is pretty weak, so if we look at the 1998 and look how much it grew, it really grew by less than 20%. So it's very reminiscent of Italy, of Italy's government spending, but yet France, yet France continued to grow. Now they did go through the recession of 08, but then they seemed to recover. And although they had weak growth, they seemed to, you know, kind of operate more or less very well. The growth was extremely weak in France. So when we take a look at the percentage change year over year, we can see that, you know, and this goes all the way back to the 80s here, we can see that, you know, France had a couple of times when they had a strong bout run, but then they had some problems with recession, and it pretty much just bounced around between 1% and 3% growth. Sometimes it would go up to 4%, and then it dropped back down. It would drop back down. Um, so it's just been very weak, weak, weak growth. And I would argue that, yes, their high government spending to GDP components components um, uh, play a factor in that. But then why does it just not like completely erode real GDP numbers? Now, of course, we're assuming that these real GDP numbers are scientifically accurate. Once again, we have to keep in fact, keep, 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 you know, in tandem here that we're not we're not looking at the full economy. We're just looking at the consumption part of the economy. And again, we're not looking at the government spending components. Maybe France has a lot of public investment going on. Maybe they've socialized a lot of their economy and taken over a lot of private investment and replaced it with public investment, which would yield some type of economic growth because it's actually an investment. But due to mismanagement of resources by government, lack of cost-benefit analysis, a, de a deterioration in innovation since government uh, since government confiscates money through taxes rather than actually having to, having to sell a good and have it compete on the market, um, it, it obviously would not result in the growth in the growth that we would see in more private sector capitalized based economies such as the U.S. But it would result in some type of growth, relatively speaking. Now, granted. Once France reaches a certain level, it's all over, and it will just consistently just erode. And certainly speaking, the French living standards have not boomed like the others have, um, it, that have been more capitalized. Instead, it seems to be more like Italy's growth. Now, 
Why am I saying all of this now? Well, the reason why is because most of, you know, if you live in the side of the U.S., uh, you know, I've been talking about how there's been um, the talk of stimulus bills going on. We already had them in 2020 and 2021. But I wanted you to draw attention and alarm to our government spending to GDP levels now. Look at where they were in the past. During the past, our government spending to GDP was, you know, less than 35%. Then with the onset of Barack Obama and the stimulus bills, he, he upped government spending to GDP, but nowhere near the levels of what we were going in Europe. Predictably, the United States recovered quicker than Europe, but uh, our, our recovery was especially growth and weak. Then if you look here, our, our government spending to GDP started dropping, which is a good sign. Our economy was allowed to grow again, and it pretty much stayed stayed under control during the, during the Trump administration until COVID broke out. And then look how much since COVID, since COVID and the government shutdowns, look how much our, our spending to GDP levels jumped up to. And that should be alarming. Fortunately speaking, they haven't stayed that way. But um, you can see what happened with the stimulus bill early in 2021, how much that boosted spending to GDP. And then look how it, it declined in quarter two because we didn't get a stimulus bill. But if we get another stimulus bill, this is definitely going to boost that, that government expenditures to GDP ratio. And like I said, that 50% component is something that we really should be careful and watching out for because that, that would definitely, at the very minimum, signal much, much weaker economic growth over time like France. Or it could result in outright stagnation like Spain and Italy or in a worst case scenario, in the case of a severe bubble crash, it could result in absolute collapse and default. So, you know, not to not to be political here, but there's a there's a point where politics and economics collide. And unfortunately, the two forces collide more often than we think because they all because both components comprise our real world situation which affects our market system so these are something to watch out for to see if any kind of stimulus bills get passed and what would happen to our economic growth over time to then place our investments accordingly um, into which sectors that might grow in the economy, because again, this is an aggregate measure, not a total measure, but also you know, to potentially look for safe havens in case of inflation breaks out, such as precious metals, which I have been touting a lot as gold and silver. Guys, that's my two cents on it. Let me know what you think. Drop a comment in the, uh, in the section below, in the channel below. Um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Click that like button, click that notification bell. That way you're notified whenever I upload a video um, and I'll talk to you next time.